So now at this point, I have to get a little bit more accurate with the proportions. And one thing I have, I have this, it's a protractor. It works well for this. You can use calipers or use a brush and just measure the heads and count. This is the way artists usually do. So if you are drawing, you're holding up your brush and measuring the head and counting down. But when sculpture is a little bit different, so what I have is this. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the chin, top of the head. Good thing about this is that I can kind of get accurate results by moving this. So this is a protractor for drawing. And what I'm gonna do, I am going to put a line where the head is, and I'm gonna count down. We're aiming for an academic classical type of sculpture, so we're gonna count down seven and a half heads. And you should see where this falls on your model. It's gonna be right about the same place. You know, things vary. You wanna look for bony landmarks because they are much more accurate than having to, say, go by the breasts or anything that's fleshy. But I am going to be looking at where it's going to hit. So that's two heads. And I get the feeling my, head, my whole sculpture is short. And this one goes actually to the navel. And I'm looking at it. It comes down to here. Right about there. So that would be where the second one is. Let me move this so you can see it. And then I'm going to take this measurement. That's the third. So this one, I have to move this entire thing up. So my legs are a little bit too short. See, this is why it's very important to be willing to make adjustments because I think a lot of people, including me, I'm not perfect, uh, you know, don't want to move their sculptures after they added details. So that's why it's like, don't get carried away with details in the beginning. Just have your sculptures be these things you can always move. So there's that. So that means that this entire thing is going to be coming up. So don't worry about making changes that we're going to have to readjust. So I'm just going to redraw this really quick because I want to make sure that that's okay. And that's the thing, I took measurements before, they were correct, and now they changed because you keep adding. And you should do this as you're sculpting. So that's my measurement, that's my measurement here. And it's still gonna go down just a bit. So, like right in there. So I'm gonna make that V shape. And then you know that this is a contrapposto, so modify it a little bit. So I'm going to take another measurement, and that's the beauty of this. You can put a mark right in there. So look in your model where this mark is, and that's about correct. So from there, I'm going to take another measurement, and that's like below the knee. So this part gets a little bit... No, I think that's about correct. Yeah, so that's about correct. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that I don't lose the knee again, I'm going to put the patella, like the knee. I'm going to define it a little bit strongly because I want to be sure that I don't lose that again. And then I'm going to take my measurement again from that point and I'm going to make sure I draw it in and make sure that the knee is correct, so it's a little bit higher. And, you know, it doesn't matter if, like, these things are a little bit off because we're always going to be correcting them. Right there. And now, the next one, we're going to take that, and it's right over there. So, and you want to take measurements along the weight-bearing leg. So, <clears throat> now I'm looking at where Mine is, this is actually the ankle. So we're gonna fill, <clears throat> and I was right, because you know, sometimes if you buy an armature, you could buy these armatures yourself, 
and not make it. You could also get the proportions off. There is a artist on YouTube named um, Andrew Joseph Keith. He has a different method of doing it. Um, he has a skeleton printed out and he builds the armature on top of that skeleton. That's a very smart way to do it because you'll get accurate proportions. So uh, maybe that's something that's better <clears throat> than this system. Because I just start doing it and then I modify it as I go along. And so there we go. This is a little bit too long right now, but keep that in mind. So you take that measurement to here. So that's seven heads. And seven and a half is going to be right over here. So we'll curve where the foot is right in here. So with this, we have our accurate proportions. Everything is still off, you know. You still have to make a lot of adjustments. There's some coffee. Adjustments and you have your head set aside you can use this. I, you know, I really love these things, even for drawing, um, because you can just keep this. Normally you use um, calipers, but you take calipers and you measure the model. Well, guys, that's how you get uh, very easy proportions using this. I really like this because it locks in the head size that you need, and then you just count it. Remember, seven and a half heads for an academic classical sculpture. You can make it eight heads, and normally eight heads is a good way to do it because you divide things equally, four up, four down. But the academic standard to make it realistic and naturalistic is seven and a half heads. Go ahead, use your own body and measure it. Uh, normally it is seven and a half heads. People vary though, and using one of these makes it easier in sculpture. It locks it down. Another thing I'm going to mention is this. This is a proportional caliper. So normally, in sculpture, you have like the calipers, and that's all you measure using this. You can measure your head, compare it, and you have that. But this one is a little bit different. It's got a smaller part. So you might ask, what is that for? Let's say that I'm doing a portrait. Um, I'm taking a measurement of my head, and this is what I'd be sculpting, so I'd be reducing it to this size. I do this often, but usually in my head. This helps out. This is the idea behind gridding. You know, um, when you watch anybody doing like a marble sculpture, they're gridding up, gridding down, and it's just kind of mathematical. If you take enough points, you'll get accurate results. But you might think it's cheating. I would not worry about that because using this, just strengthens your eyes. It forces you to measure. And a lot of people do not measure enough. So with this, I just showed you that I made tons of mistakes after taking measurements. Things move. And as an artist, you have to adjust. You have to constantly be adding, removing, adjusting things that you worked on. And unfortunately, that's how the art game is. It's um, about making changes and forcing yourself to be honest. So these things, even though they might seem like it's cheating, like it's gridding, they're very useful. There's another technique I'll be doing a video later on, and that's the site size method. This is what they use in the Florence Academy of Art for sculpture and drawing and painting. That's a little bit different. It's, you know, I don't like it as much. I've done quite a bit of it, but it's taking a line and going to a perspective and just reducing. It's, it's a brilliant way of strengthening your eye. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out by, you know, having the algorithm favor some of my videos. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 20,000 by the end of the year. So hopefully you can help with that. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video.